This problem is from chapter 22, number 3, about the pellets. And it reads two pellets, each with a charge of one microcoulomb, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, are located 3 centimeters, which is 0 0.03 meters apart. Show that the electric force between them is 10 newtons. There's a little bit more to it, but I'll read that. Uh, later. This is sufficient for now. So basically we have two pallets and each of them has a charge of 10 to negative 6 coulombs and they're a distance of 0 0.03 meters apart and we're supposed to figure out what the force is. Of course according to Coulomb's law so Fc equals K times Q1, Q2, divided by D squared. And I will show that in a moment on the calculator, but I figured the other thing I can do is show you this in, a, in an animation. Okay, so here there is a pellet, pretty much, I'm just going to make a circle there. There you go, it doesn't really matter how big it is. And if you read the numbers down below, you can see that at this point there are 0 0.03 meters apart. I also have to edit a few numbers here. It's supposed to be 10 to the negative 6, so that's what I'm doing. And then the other one, also 10 to the negative 6. Notice that I'm not touching the mass here, because the mass doesn't matter as far as the electrostatic force is concerned. Okay, that's good enough for this one. At this point here when I open this software by default gravity is turned on as being vertical. I want to turn it off here because otherwise my pellets is just gonna fall down. But then I also have to turn on electrostatics. So there it is and you can see here is that Coulomb constant K 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Notice that our book is using 9 times 10 to the ninth, so I'm they're using a round number because that 8.99 is really close to 9.0. So let's just use the book's number. It's only off by like 0.1 percent. Okay, here for this one, I'm gonna let's see measure the electrostatic force. There it is. I just need the total force. There we go. And then I hit the run button and let's see what happens. And the two actually fly apart and we see what happens to the force. It reduces the further they get away. However, they're just saying that these two pellets are three centimeters apart from each other. And so by them flying away, I cannot fix this number here. So what I do instead is I anchor them down. Looks a bit weird, but actually this software does use an anchor for anchoring down. And then I hit the run button and indeed it tells me that there is an electrostatic force between the two of 10 newtons. It doesn't specify in the problem if each of them is supposed to be positive or negative, actually. It does. It says each of them is charged of one microcoulomb, which implies that each of them is positively charged, so they are supposed to repel each other. Okay, and they do so with 10 newtons, and if I did the force on the other one, it would be also 10 newtons. Okay, here is the calculation. And it will be K times Q1 times Q2 divided by D squared, so 9 times, and I have to be able to reach my keypad here. Hold on just a moment. Okay, that's better for me. I can also move this up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so 9 times 10 to the 9th, and that's, oops, negative 9. No, 9th, that's right, 9th, times 1 times 10 to the negative 6 times 1 times 10 to the negative 6 divide by, and this one I will put in parentheses, 
0 0.03. Actually, I didn't have to put it in parentheses. I'll take that back. Squared meters. And hit enter, and I come up with exactly 10 newtons. So, this is what I just did. FC equals 9 times 10 to the 9th times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs times 1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And then I try a fraction bar. Oh, that's not too bad. 0 0.03 meters. Ah, that's why I wanted to put it on parentheses on the calculator because of the unit, but of course on the calculator I don't need a unit. Equals, and I come up with 10 newtons if I wouldn't have forgotten the unit for K, which is given early in the, relatively early in the chapter. Where they, there it is, introduce it, which is newtons square meters per coulomb meters. And then the coulomb square here can, divides with the coulombs here, and the meter square here divides with the meter square here, and that leaves as shown 10, and the unit is newtons. Okay, as far as the mass is concerned, for that, I would have to say, okay, the force in the Earth's gravitational field would simply be the weight, mass times gravity, and since often we can use 10 meters per second squared for the acceleration due to gravity, then we can come up here with one kilogram, and that would be the equivalent mass that would experience the same kind of force of 10 newtons as its weight and that would be like a heavy book I guess. Um, the 0 0.03 centimeters on the other one here, well they are about an inch apart and they have a very small charge on them, one microcoulomb, it produces the same force as the weight of this relatively heavy book and that kind of tells us that the electrostatic force is indeed pretty large. The next problem is from chapter 22, number 4, which says electronic types. And it says, electronic types neglect the force of gravity on electrons to see why. Compute the force of Earth's gravity on an electron and compare it with the force exerted on the electron by an electric field of magnitude 10,000 volts per meter, which in parentheses is said to be a relatively small field. The mass and charge of an electron are given on the inside back cover. Okay, so here is a gravitational force in the Earth's gravitational field, and that's Fg equals g times the mass of the electron times the mass of Earth, because it's an Earth's gravitational field, the circle with a plus inside, that's the symbol for Earth, divide by the distance squared, which in this case in the Earth's gravitational field would be on the surface of the Earth, and so we could say d squared or the radius squared uh, of the Earth. And that equals then the gravitational constant given as 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 and really weird units, newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared times, and at this point I'm running out of space, so I'm going to push this all over here, there we go, times, and the electron mass is given as 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, times the mass of the Earth is also given as 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. 
I believe in our book it's actually given as 6 times 10 to the... no it is 5.9 8 10 to the 20 for kilograms so it's not even rounded in our books and then a fraction bar that actually came out pretty good divided by the radius of the earth which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters and I just want to confirm that that is given in the book as well uh, where did I get that from? somewhere in the book oh yeah there I found it 6.3 6.37 times to 6. I did find it in our book. Meters, which is 6,370 kilometers or almost exactly 4,000 miles. And that needs to be squared. And that equals. And then I go to the graphing calculator. And I'm going to type that in just the way I got it here 6.67. And if you happen to have a calculator that allows you to do this there's CSEE here or it might just be a single E you may click that and then negative 11 which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 9.1 again I'm gonna do this here E negative 31 times 5.98 E 24 so using this E or using 10 to the power either one of them is the same but you have to do it properly divide by parentheses 6.37 this time I do put parentheses because I'm using scientific notation and it just makes it easier for the calculator to recognize that properly that the square goes to both the 6.37 as far as well as the 10 to the 6th. That would be really important if I wrote here 10 to the 6th times 10 to the 6th, then I really would need to put parentheses around it. In any case, I hit the enter button and if I did everything right, that is the correct answer, 8.9 times 10 to the negative 30. So 8.9 times 10 to the negative 30 and the units would have to be newtons square meters and kilograms squared will cancel could have been a little bit quicker if I just had determined the weight of that electron mass E times acceleration due to gravity would have been 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared and if I do that on the calculator, 0.1 e negative 31 times 9.8 comes indeed out to 8.9 times 10 to the negative 30. But there also was a reasoning why I showed you this long one here with the gravitational law from a previous chapter, and the unit is here Newtons because we will use it in another problem relatively soon. Okay, for the electric, electrostatic force, in this case here, notice that they don't give us a distance to the other charge, they don't give us the other charge, instead they give us the electric field. So we have to use a different equation than the Coulomb law that we used a moment ago because we don't have another point charge here. So we're gonna do F equals electric field times the given charge and the electric field is given as 10,000 volts per meter and the charge would be the charge of the electron which is what we look up 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and all I really have to do here is uh, shift the decimal point so 1.6 times 10 to the negative 15 and then it would be volt coulomb per meters but we can abbreviate that to newtons because that's what the unit for the force should be this one here and, and notice that negative 19 became negative 15 because I have to shift it four times here one for each of those zeros and then we can compare these two numbers this one here looks really tiny it is really tiny but this one here looks much much smaller by 10 to the 15 times smaller